Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I don't really like this negative one half times 9.8. So I'm going to actually rewrite this. I'm going to erase that and rather than negative one half times 9.8. I know that half of 9.8 is 4.9. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to negative 4.9 t squared plus 18 t plus 25. And that was from multiplying the negative one half times the 9.8. All right, um, the next question says, how high is the ball after two seconds? So two seconds means I'm going to let t equal two. So of course, I'm going to... all right, so I typed um, it into my calculator and I found out that it was 41.4. So I'm going to write out the work that I did just so the reason I like to do that is that when I go back and I look at my notes, and I just see a number, 41.4, and I'm like, wait, how did I get that? That way I know exactly how I got it, and it didn't take me that much work um, to show that. All right, so um, now the last question asks, when will the ball hit the ground? So whenever we're asked when something will hit the ground, um, you've got to realize that hitting the ground is like finding a zero or a solution because the x-axis is like the ground. Um, or we can think of it as x-intercepts. All right, so you've got to realize that when a ball goes up and then comes back down, um, well, let's just look and we'll, we'll find the two different x-intercepts. I would rather... Um, not use the graph this time. We're still going to use our calculator, but I just want to show you another way to do it. So you could put it into y equals and you could find the zeros. Some people struggle in figuring out what's the appropriate window, how do I change my window to get this quadratic to show me what I wanted to show me. So I thought we would just try the quadratic formula. So when you use the quadratic formula, quadratic formula is x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That is my quadratic formula. All right, so the first thing I do when I'm using the quadratic formula is I identify my a, b, and c values. In this equation, a is negative 4.9, b is 18, and c is 25. So I'm just going to simply substitute into my quadratic formula. So x equals the opposite, um, I'm sorry, the opposite of b, so negative 18, plus or minus the square root of 18 squared, minus 4 times negative 4.9 times c, which is 25, all over 2 times my a value, which is negative 4.9. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my calculator. All right, the only part that I'm going to put into the calculator right now is the part that's under the radical. And I want you to notice anywhere where I substituted in A, B, or C values, what I did was I used parentheses. Here I put parentheses around the 18. This matters um, because if this had been a negative 18, and I didn't have the parentheses, then I would have ended up with the incorrect answer. I'll show you that a little bit later. All right, so I substituted everything under, in under the radical, and I get 814. So I'm going to go back to my paper, and I've got negative 18 plus or minus the square root of 814 all over 2 times negative 4.9, and it was negative 9.8. And the next thing I need to do is I need to reduce and or figure out what the square root of 814 is. So that's going to take me back to my calculator. All right, so the square root of 814 I did by hitting second in the x squared. That gave me that square root. And I hit enter. And I get that number. It's, I'm not going to put all of that in. Because they're, right here it looks like it kind of falls off, I'm just going to use 28.53 as the number that um, I use for the square root of 814. So I've got negative 18 
plus or minus 28.53 divided by negative 9.8. All right, so now at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my calculator and I'm gonna end up with two answers because I've got negative 18 plus 28.53 divided by negative 9.8 and negative 18 minus 28.53 divided by negative 9.8. So I'm kind of running low on space here. I'm just gonna kind of do this. And this will be where I'll put my two answers once I find them on my calculator. Right, so I want you to notice that in the calculator, um, I had to put my numerator in parentheses and my denominator in parentheses. Otherwise, the calculator would have divided this and then added the negative 18 because that's order of operations is division before addition. So you have to protect this with parentheses then divide by the negative 9.8. Since we are rounding to two decimal places, we'll keep doing that. So one of my answers is negative 1.07, and then I'm going to find my other one using the calculator. All right, and notice again, I protected the negative 18 minus the 28.53 with parentheses divided by negative 9.8, and we'll say that's 4.75. All right, so you'll notice I put in the negative 1.07 and the 4.75. Now, in light of this problem, since it says when will the ball hit the ground, this negative 1.07 doesn't make sense. Saying um, negative seconds, like a second before they ever threw it, it would have hit the ground. That doesn't make sense. But the 4.75 does make sense. So I'm just going to cross out this um, solution, I don't need that one, and my only answer is 4.75 seconds. And again, I just wanted to show you how to do that using the quadratic formula. Alright, so we're going to look um, on the next page at um, this next example. 24 randomly selected pigs were each given a daily dosage of, food, of a food supplement. Three pigs each received the same dosage and their percent weight gain was averaged. The table below uh, shows the average percent weight gain in one month for pigs in relation to the dosage. So again, looks like the dosage here, that's going to be my x, so that's going to be my independent. I'm just going to abbreviate that. And my percent weight gain is going to be y, and that's my dependent. I'm assuming that this 10 stands for 10%, this 13 stands for 13%, etc. Okay, so the first thing we're asked to do is using your calculator, fit a linear model to this data. So um, what I did was I went to my calculator and I went to stat and edit and I entered L1, I put my X values and in L2 I put my Y values and then I'm going to go to stat and I'm going to go to calc and I'll choose linear regression. Um, and I'll calculate that line, and I'm going to write that down as the equation uh, for my line. Let's see. Let's go to three decimal places. All right, so I wrote my linear model down. X stands for my dosage. Oops. And Y stands for my percent gain. Is the linear model appropriate? Why or why not? All right, I need to answer the question if the linear model is appropriate, which means I need a correlation coefficient. So once again, um, if you're not, if you don't have the R um, value there, you're going to want to go to second catalog, and you're going to scroll to where it says diagnostics on. Go over this a couple of times because it is something that people forget. Um, so let's put the diagnostics on and once I do that now I can go back and I can pull up my um, so stat calc. I'm going to go to linear regression again. I'll go down to calculate and when I hit enter now I have an R value. 0.18 is what that R value would be. Right. Is, um, so my correlation coefficient is 0.18. So 
uh, linear model is not appropriate. Because the correlation coefficient is so low. And then I'm going to go ahead and say what the correlation coefficient is, it's 0.8. All right, so then it says using your calculator, fit a quadratic model to the data. So since I'm fitting a quadratic model to the data, I have to go back to STAT, I'll go over to CALC, and this time I'm going to choose quadratic regression model. We've done number four, linear regression. We've done zero, exponential regression. Now we're going to look at choice five, which is the quadratic regression. I'll ask them to calculate that for us. And that gives me my A, B, and C values. Let's round to two decimal places. All right, so I fit a quadratic model to the data. Y equals negative 0.97x squared plus 7.16x plus 9.29. I want to go back to the calculator. And I want you to notice there is no correlation coefficient. There is simply an R squared value. That's because a quadratic both increases and decreases. Correlation coefficients tell us if it increases or decreases and how well the exponential or linear model fits it. Well, since, since quadratics both increase and decrease, there's no such thing as a correlation coefficient. There is only an R squared value. And this R squared value is 0.91. So the R squared value is 0.91, um, which means that it's a pretty good fit for the data. Use your model, and they mean the quadratic model here, because the linear one was not a good model, to predict the percent weight gain of a pig who receives a 3.5 pellet dosage. So we're going to let x equal 3.5. We're going to substitute it into our quadratic model. And we'll see what we get. So I'd like it to use. All right, so I put the 3.5 in for x, and I got 22 points. Since we've been doing two decimal places, we'll say 0.47. Okay, so I um, showed my substitution, and I put my answer as 22.47. And since that represents a percent, I put the percentage sign. Next, it says use your model. So we're going to use the same model to predict the percent weight gain of a pig who receives a 15 pellet dosage. So this time you're going to be substituting 15 in and see what you get on your calculator. All right, so this time I put in 15 and I got negative 101.56. All right, so a negative 101.56% weight gain. So in other words, this pig has lost more than all of its weight. 100% is all of its weight. It's impossible to lose more than all of your weight. So why might the prediction in part E be inaccurate? Well, because the prediction is too far from the given data. Because the prediction is too far from the given data, And that's one of the um, instances where extrapolation just shows that we've extrapolated too far. We tried to extrapolate too far. All right. All right, this next example asks us to find an equation for the quadratic function containing these three points. So, um, all we need to do is we need to go to our calculator and negative 2 and 0 and 2, these are my x coordinates, we'll put those in L1. 3, 1, and 27 will go in L2. We'll choose quadratic model and we'll find our equation. Okay, so I went to stat and edit. I entered the data in the calculator. Now I'm going to go to stat. And calc, and I'm going to go down to choice five, quadratic regression, and I'm going to calculate my equation, and then I will write that down. And I want you to notice that the r squared is one, so it's a 